Hello, and welcome to Collaboratory, the show where Mike Morris improvises an animatic with a little help from our audience. And we learn a little bit about the craft of storyboarding along the way. This is an improv art stream that runs on audience suggestions. Mike, how are you today, and what kind of prompts are you looking for from the audience? Hey, Charles. Hey, just so all of you know, this is Charles Jones, one of my best friends, yeah. and I'm so happy to have him on this stream. Uh, what we are looking for is three things. We're looking for characters, preferably round two, a setting, and a conflict for those characters to be in. So those are the three things we're looking for, and we will generate our stream, or um, we'll generate a storyboard from that. Yeah, and we're going to do a little focus on cinematography today, right, Mike? Yes. And just a reminder yes. to jump in with your suggestions. Whatever you type might show up on screen. And as we go on, we will keep including your suggestions to make this great. Like Mike yeah. said, my name's Charles. I'm an editor at Disney, and I've worked on shows like Proud Family, Big Hero 6, and Futurum, where I worked on and met Mike. You know, I want to just kind of touch on something about the editor and the storyboard artist relationship, you know. We kind of, uh, like, we go hand in hand. We're like best friends, you know. We kind of plus yeah. up you guys' work. And, uh, you know, when you're lucky, we might even add things that you might not even thought of. You guys wear a lot of hats. And so it's our job to kind of lessen that load. You know what I mean? And yeah. uh, today's a special day because um, being an editor, I'm new to storyboard also, storyboard art, storyboard pro also. So we're going to learn together for all those that are new to storyboard. So this is going to be a real good one. Right? Right, Mike? Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> And you know, it, it, you can't really downplay that relationship between board artist, director, and editor. I feel like show, like edit is where the show gets made, yeah. right? Yeah. I feel like that's where things really come to light in a really interesting way. In the fact that sometimes when you see it all hung together and it's all timed, it's got the sound effects in it and everything like that, yep. that's when you really see like, oh, this is it. This is where the show's going. Like, this is who the characters are. Like, this is, for some reason, it just gives you that clarity. Yeah. And 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 then you realize, oh, well, I need to pose here. Or, oh, I need to pose there. Or, oh, this was way too many poses. I need to cut these out. <laughs> like, uh, I don't know. Sometimes I feel like you can get those, like, like I, I call them board blinders, mm -hmm. where, where you, you're so focused on a certain idea that when, you, when it goes into edit, and they're like, well, that doesn't totally make sense. Let's, yeah. let's, let's do this and that and let's organize this here. And I mean, I mean, we've, we've both known some editors that are like, you know, really, really calm and really cool about stuff. And you see basically what you had in the board. And then there's like the other side of the spectrum with like, Oh yeah. Butchers <laughs> who just go through <laughs> and, and reorganize everything. Like, uh, can you speak a little bit about that? Like, like you know, I was going to say, I was going to say while you were talking though that I I've had a couple opportunities where they say, oh, "Wow, I never thought of it that way." But I've also had some moments where they're like, "Hey, why did you take out the scene when I did A, B, and C?" You know, and you know, again, the story. But I'll let you answer your question. I think you had a specific question. You know, I feel like when I say we we're best friends and we have a relationship. It's not that sometimes the board artist doesn't really get to interact with us as good as they should. You know what I mean, Mike? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's because the real... director, right? Mainly yeah, director. directly with the director. So when I'm getting the question of why did this get cut out, I'm like, it's either, hey, the episode was so bloated, we had to take some out, or you know, the director wanted it out because it didn't make sense anymore. You know, but but you, I think you might have had a question, and I kind of jumped right on top of you. Sorry about that. Oh, no. Um, you know, one, I just had another question, though, that, that I want to ask you. So, um, you know, in the edit bay, sometimes there have been people who are there as board artists in the edit bay. Yeah. You know, how, tell me about if that's like helpful for you or, because I know that, you know, we, we've had some late nights where we've been working <laughs> on uh, projects and stuff. And all of a sudden yeah. it's like, hey, we need this specific board right here. Yeah. Um, we need to post for this. I think it's a, uh, it's it's that's a true blessing when you get a board artist right there in you because you you as you know you and I we were working on like Robocarpalypse remember and it was like yeah, uh, yeah. hey you know it might be real great right now you know we we don't know where we are we got all these close ups it's action 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 but if we could just pull out you know get a wide shot to kind of establish something or even like 
you know, there's times when you and I would just be talking while you're drawing, like we're going to do today, you know, and you're like, yeah, uh, you know, it'd be really funny if the character just kind of looks over and just pauses for a minute. You know, those little com those comedic beats are important. You know, that whole relationship just spitballing back and forth between the editor and the board artist. I think that's great. I wish we did more of that. Um, you, you know, and, and I think it largely comes down to workflow and what you can pull off. I, yeah. I, I, I honestly think that like, I mean, I've directed some some stuff where I didn't even get to sit in with the editor. It was just oh, yeah. the supervising director took it over from there, and That's um, crazy. <laughs> I, I I felt like so jealous of that, you know, that I should be in the edit bay with the editor, yeah, and be able to you know craft that story even more completely from just the storyboard, you know, and see that see the whole the whole story unfold the way that it should. Yeah, that's the TV um, schedule, though, you know, it's kind of tight. So you're already moving on to your next episode, probably at times, you know, as a director or two episodes yeah. at the same time, you know, not to yeah, freak anybody out. Anybody wants to be aspiring directors in TV animation. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that that's kind of uh, the, the thing, though. I mean, a lot yeah. of it comes down to schedule and um, and being able uh, i've i've considered being able to sit in and edit as sort of a luxury in a lot of ways where it should be standard practice yeah i agree 100% i agree 100% let me ask you a question mike before we get started yeah. we're waiting for maybe some questions to roll in you know um, i'm sure in your other episodes you might have touched on perspective and camera placement and since we're talking about cinematography a little bit possibly today you know, um, from my experience being an editor, you know, we get to see it from the board stage all the way to animation stage if we're lucky, you know. And mm -hmm. there's sometimes you get like, um, you know, the animation, the animator always sometimes has a little trouble executing exactly what the board artist was, you know, envisioning or creating. You know, for yeah. example, let's say like you have a down shot, everything looks flat or you have a character walking towards camera up a hill. That's a little, you know, hard to do. Um, so with that, would you say for a board artist, is it kind of important to have an animation background? Uh, it's extraordinarily helpful. And we, and we, we discussed a little bit about this before, before the stream, but um, I feel like the better you are as an animation artist, it, like period in general, like if you can construct a scene, if you can stage it in a way that will make it palatable for whatever animation style you're doing. Um, and you understand that process going from boards to animation to post, um, you're going to be that much more fit to come up with cool shots that yeah. will, that will like not only complement the, the show that you're doing, but like, will make it stand out, you know, right. like where, where's that line to push? You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. cause in a, in it, like in a CG show, like you've got a camera that can go anywhere, right? So you can do a lot of 3D stuff and, and, and nobody really bats an eye about it because uh, all of it has that 3D component. I mean, you know, there are some things like you, you heard about like in The Incredibles, uh, the boards were so tight that they didn't even have to model the backs of some of the chairs because they were never going to be seen. Oh, right, yeah. yeah. So there's stuff like that, obviously, but in a standard, you know, uh, 3D workflow, you have a lot of freedom. Whereas, like maybe with a t with a 2D show, you don't have as much freedom, and it's a little bit more smoke and mirrors. Mm -hmm. So knowing knowing that 2D process, you know, and I think in Harmony we're a little spoiled uh, because we have 3D capabilities within the yeah. 2D landscape. So you can do like you know cool parallaxes and stuff, and you can do some of those 3D elements within it. Um, but knowing the limitations of the style you're doing and knowing how to animate within that, it's going to help with acting. It's going to help with being able to, uh, you know, show and, and, and stage properly. Mm -hmm. Um, so the more complete of an animation artist you are, the better off you're going to be like period. Right. Right. Well, would you say that there are there angles or anything like I gave the example of a down shot or, you know, to, that make things look flat. Would you say there's angles that, to stay away from as a board artist then? Is that something to even think um, about? I think what you need to talk to, uh, what you need to think about is what the producer is going to say about the budget because tricky, oh, there, there, there are shots that you can do. I mean, you shouldn't limit yourself to, uh, any particular, like I can do this shot, I can do that shot, I can't do this shot, I can't do that shot. 
unless like that's not the show style, you know? Right. You have to think about the show style. Is a down shot appropriate for the show you're working on? Or is like the show like almost all down shots? In which case, like down shot away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but like, uh, for instance, like say you have a shot of a security camera, right? And it's like through the monitor of a security camera. You have to do a down shot because they're all placed up high. You know, I, I have yet to see the security camera that is not uh, placed up high and is very visible, you know? <laughs> yeah. uh, so like it, it, there's certain shots where you kind of have to do that. And in that case, you know, you have to talk to the producer, the director and say, can we take the hit on this? Uh, will, will that work? And, and again, you know, that, that comes back to a lot of just being able to plan things out and knowing the show, knowing the limitations of what you can do and knowing where to push. Right. Oh, so, it looks like we got our experience. first, go ahead. I'm sorry, Mike. I didn't mean to cut you off. It just takes a little experience. That's all. It looks like gonna... we got our first suggestion from Simon 31. All it right. says hip hop dancer or instructor. His okay. dance studio is burning on fire. He knows someone burnt his studio down, but now he needs to figure out who burnt his studio. Whoa. <laughs> so that's like all three in one comment. It really wow. is. You know, he Simon, it all. <laughs> Simon, he's he's the first. He, he's the first today. So you know what? We're going to go with uh, what Simon wants. All right. That's awesome. So I think, okay, establishing shot. Lay it on me. Oof. So obviously, you know, if it's a studio, are we starting with a, a wide shot of the studio on fire? I think so. I think I think right. that's probably what we should do. What do you think if we um, let's let's go to our stage view, All right. so we can see we can see the camera a little bit better. I think we need it. I think we need a pan. I think Ooh, we need. You know, it's funny. I was thinking the same thing, like a like a reveal pan from left to right or yeah. something. Yeah. Yeah. I think this particular dance studio can be on the f uh, the floor of a multi-story building. I think that that could uh, help it. And, you know, we, we could always do like the sinister real estate developer uh, sort of story mm -hmm. uh, and have it be kind of like an older looking building. Yeah. You know, you know, it's uh, funny. Once you said um, you wanted to do a pan or a camera move, the first the editor in me was like, yeah, it's going to start. You were just hearing sound effects, crackling fire, and then we pan, and then you hear, you see the reveal of the burning building. I digress. Uh, I just yeah. wanted to say what my imagination came up with for a moment. <laughs> no, no, that's great. I mean, I, I, I think that's like the the mentality that absolutely needs to be in an you know in an editing mindset. You, you're thinking about the total. Yeah. How to set know, the stage? Yeah. And how to how to hit somebody right in the feels, you know, when when stuff yeah. starts happening. So let's let's say this is a this is a bit of an older building that's put in some brick, you know. It's got some large. So let's go with something like this. It's got some large windows. Actually, you know what? That's going to go all the way down. So let's go all the way down those windows. And let's Mike, why are you doing that? Can I tell you a little story since we were just talking about animation? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, in my early, early days of animation, I was lucky to work with Eric Goldberg, you know. Oh. Eric Goldberg, you know, the yes. animator yes. of the Aladdin, Eric Goldberg, Genie, you know. Oh, dude. Uh, well, oh. anyway, so this was back in the days when there were, you know, X sheets and down shooting animation and, you know, so everything was on paper. You know, Mike he will tell you guys all about X sheets and down shooting later. But um, Eric, Eric was the one that taught me how to fill out an X sheet. Oh, whoa, really? <laughs> yeah, which was well, this, this like story be great education, I'll tell you that. Holy cow, that guy is amazing. So with the story, you know, he gave me the scene. It was a long scene. He shot it. He drew everything. And Eric, Eric draws everything on one. So every single frame stands on its own like a poster frame. Anyway, so we got to the edit. He's sitting down. We played it for a couple seconds. It was a long shot. 
he stops it and asks me, Charles, why did you take out frame 1272? And I was like, whoa, it's playing 24 frames a second in real time, a character running through the frame. And he noticed 1272 was taken out. I tell that story all the time because it's like, whoa, this, you know, I always tell everybody I'm either as a person, I'm scared of the IRS or I'm scared of Eric Goldberg as an, as an editor because he knows when I take something out. But, you know, all editors, we want to get to the point a lot faster, you know, like taking a couple frames out means that character will be a little more sporadic running. But he saw those frames just by playing it back. That blew my mind. <laughs> it was crazy. Well, I mean, they, they they say that that Walt Disney had that particular talent too. Wow! So uh, the story goes that uh, one of the animator uh, people, maybe it was editor, I don't remember who it was. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. They decided they were going to put a drawing in, just a, a, a random drawing yeah. into mm -hmm. like a Snow White thing. And uh, and it like looked like similar enough that it would you know fool somebody's eye, but he picked it right out. That's crazy! Like it just and probably it like, like Boop, just like that, just a little pop. Yeah. And it was That's like, who did this? Who did this? <laughs> no. And uh, and and then when he found out it was a joke, he sort of laughed it off. But uh, you wow. know, it, it is that is that sort of thing. There's there's people out there that just have that visual acuity, and you just like, I'm not messing with that. You know. <laughs> Because uh, they're they're just that good. All right, so we got uh, something of a of a of a building here, and you know a, a lot of this uh, we we talked about this on the show before that a lot of these drawings are just you know simple things that we're not going to put too much stock in, but enough to make it make it read. Okay. Boof. Let's get rid of those two. Okay. So let's put in a couple little bit more details so we so we get a we get a sense of this place being sort of like an older, maybe a inner city type uh thing. Mm -hmm. You know, because uh I mean, you know Charles, you you knew you know that historically I'm a hip hop dancer, right? I mean <laughs> I did not know that, but I can't wait to see some videos. We're gonna definitely meme those. <laughs> no, I, 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 I'm I'm not a hip hop dancer. Not not by any not by any stretch of the imagination. That's uh, funny, man. You know, I like yeah. how you got some of the you have some of the city in the background too, and you know maybe you could touch on a little bit of that. Not even from this scene, but like what I think you said it earlier about in another episode where you talked about like maybe crowds and you kind of just kind of use silhouettes or shadows or something. Is that kind of, that's kind of what you're doing here with the, with the, with the cityscape in the background, right? Yeah. I, I feel like sometimes you, you don't need to explain everything, but, yeah. but giving, giving your audience just a little something, I think that is absolutely warranted, you know, in, in, in so many ways. Um, you have to give them uh, a sense of place a sense of where they are, a sense of, um, you know, what this environment is that they're, that they're going to be doing or that, that they're going to be portraying. Yeah. So, um, the stronger that sense is, I think the better off that you're going to be, you know, and I'm just going to make this one set of windows that's going to go toward the back of the building, I think, because that's going to look a little bit better, I think. And Mike, you know, as I opened up with this, with my lack of knowledge of, you know, Sorbo Pro, because I'm an editor, um, it's I know that it's vector based, right? Yes, that's fantastic. You know, because you can pretty much scale up and go wherever you want to. And I'm yeah, I, I'm. Just, <laughs> it's one of those things like once you uh, start drawing in vector, you don't want to. You want to go, go back. back. <laughs> yeah, you, you don't want to go back because um, it's just so freeing. Yeah. You know. And if I can nerd out with you while you're doing this, is it like, um, you know, I'm, I'm as an editor, you, your speed is important. So, you know, shortcuts and stuff like that is important. Can I just ask your question, a question about like maybe these uh, straight lines? Are there, is there like a, again, knowing that I'm a beginner, um, is there like a shortcut to make the line straight or not? Just, yeah. Just hold down shift. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, that good for me. Like, it, no. It's uh, and and I usually have both of my fingers uh, around the shift alt control area uh -huh. because if I hold down shift and alt, then it's constrained to like ninety oh, that's degrees. Perfect. And then just uh, holding down shift, you can do straight lines, and then uh, you know control and and alt like to turn back to your uh, from a brush to the selection tool. You can just hold down S. And that is just a toggle release, Great. unless you hold, unless you do Alt S, which turns it to your normal selection tool. But I mean, it's all about selecting and um, being able to, you know, manipulate stuff. Yeah. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cap this off right here too. So I'm just gonna cap that off, and then just get out my paint bucket, and I'm just gonna bust a color in there, just really quickly. Um, and then let's, so we have, we have this, we're going to start, let's, let's, let's go down here and we'll start right about here. So this is where your sirens would come into play, some of that other stuff. And then let's drop in, uh, whoops, I accidentally reset the camera. I didn't want to do that. So let's put in a, a keyframe at the end here. And then we'll put that up there. Uh, all right, give, give me give me a name for this dance instructor. Oh, well, how about Sergio? I don't know why that stands out to me, but <laughs> that name just sounds so exotic for a hip hop instructor. My name is Sergio. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I do a guy at college named Sergio. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, then hopefully he's seeing this and he'll know that this is about him. <laughs> Sergio dance. And William 007 says that Sergio is great. <laughs> so we're on the right track, Mike. We're on the right track. Okay, good. I'm, I'm so glad Sergio is, is going over so well <laughs> with our audience because, you know, we, we strive to keep them happy. Okay, Sergio Dance and Sergio Dance is on fire. <laughs> All right, let's uh somebody somebody feels threatened. Oh no, Sergio. <laughs> like this is this is in raging inferno type type area. So now the, the question is, is, is Sergio inside or is he just outside watching all of this? Well, you know, I think it's, it's probably a little more dynamic to the story if he's watching it from the outside, you know, seeing everything that he's worked for that he, he now lost. Don't you think? I mean, yeah. either way, there's a dramatic effect to it because he could be in there and everybody, someone's got to save him or something. But... Um, I well, guess then, the then, older then we would need a second that character, but uh, yeah, then we would definitely need a second character. So let's let's open that up to the chat. Should Sergio be outside or Sergio's in in the in the flaming inferno? Yeah, let's see what they say. Simon thirty one says Sergio is watching his studio burn from the outside. From, from the outside, house. okay. So the the impeccable William Double O Seven says it as well. We're gonna we're gonna say that with a theater voice. Sergio is watching from the outside of his studio, <laughs> and, <laughs> and with his hip hop outfit on from Simon Thirty One. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, whoops, I need to turn my draw behind on so I can keep my nice, uh, um, you know, lines on top. Oh, that's not draw behind. That's the. <laughs> um, that is the feature that will let you close up and auto autofill. That's sort of looking. Oh, nice. Autofill. All that's right, so Sergio nice. Dance is on fire, and uh, let's do a new a new shot. Um, I think what we need is let's do let's do the down shot. Should we do the down shot? Down shot it is, man. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Okay, hey, while you're doing that, let me ask you a question, Mike. Yeah. You know, like um, while we're waiting for any more suggestions, and guys, please be as crazy and wild as you can think if you want. You know, let's challenge this thing. Make this great. Um, yeah. 
I mean, to pick your brain about like timing, you know, you know, that's kind of one of the editor's main thing, you know, but timing is, a, you know, this could be a loaded question because a lot of things come into timing, like the timing of the acting to land a joke or, you know, like, or just the, the duration of the shot or anything, but also timing um, of, you know, your deadline, you know what I mean? Because, you know, in sure. TV, you know, time waits for no one. And, you know, it, so could, basically, could you just, do you have anything in your back pocket like copy and pasting shots from a shot to shot or something like that, you know, to kind of make things a little more efficient, you know, you, you know, is there yeah. something like that you always do? I mean, you know, in story. Well, I, I think that a lot of times that you can call back to scenes. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think that it, the most efficient storyboarding method is the sort of master shot and cut in and cut out with different shots peppered in as needed. Um, and, and that's a pretty efficient way to board because you can get a lot of mileage out of out of one drawing. Right. Um, and I and I and I think that's a that's a great way to operate. And we do that a lot on this show where we set up some stuff and then we'll cut in and out of it. But um, I'm gonna I'm gonna put uh, Sergio's. Let's let's give him some like uh, hiked up pants here. <laughs> you know, you said he he's like almost on his way to to go do some stuff at the dance studio yeah. um, then we're gonna duplicate that frame and so we still have that you know and also I think one, one thing we're gonna do here is share that drawing I'm gonna copy it and then I'm gonna delete this BG layer and then I'm gonna paste it back so now with this little dot on it Whatever we update here is going to is going to show up. So, say I want to do like I'm gonna I'm gonna put uh like some street lines on, on here, you know. So so he's so so we know that Sergio is going to be like running into the middle of the street. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll put some like little bits of you know texture some garbage type things, maybe a little bit of, you know, texture or something. That's probably a little bit too dark. I'm gonna crank up my brush and just put like, you know what, let's, let's put it back here because I feel like the, the light of the fire would, you know, make this front part more illuminated. All right. So going back here, we have Sergio our hero as it were running Oops. let's get him on the right layer it's another thing you know we talked a little bit about organization before uh the stream went on and uh, what was it that you brought up um, you know, yeah one of my questions about that when we well, what we were talking about was you know as an editor it's important to kind of keep things kind of streamlined or organized because let's say I need to go on vacation or, uh, you know, I move on to another show. It's easy for another editor to be able to just jump in and take over and see where things are, you know? And I was just wondering, you know, before the show, if, is it the kind of, is it kind of the same for a storyboard artist? Is it kind of good to be organized and have, you know, whatnot to, for the, for the next person? I don't, I don't know if uh, multiple board artists dabble in your, in your projects. Yes, all the time. I mean, um, one of the things that we talk about in, in the stream uh, a bit here and there is just being organized in the way that you operate as far as like uh, making sure that your layers are named the same thing uh, for characters and props and backgrounds and all of these things. If your layer naming is consistent, it's going to help with because what happens is like, notice on the layer panel here, I have panel B selected. I'm gonna go back to the previous one. It's gonna stay on B. So if it's not, if B doesn't exist, it'll just default to the top layer. So if you're not organized, then you've got your layers all over the place and you don't know where you're drawing after a while. <laughs> yeah. So that, that becomes a problem. So let's, let's give him some like looser pants you know, because he's gonna be moving. Let's give him some um, some good sneaks, and then yeah, I kind of uh, wish 
I kind of wish there was something in his hands because there's something about when you watch a movie and something devastating happens, they cut to the floor and see that drop. Like maybe he's maybe he just finished shopping for all his new dance attire or his uniform. Oh, that's great. He's running with all these bags or something. And then when he sees his building on fire, the, the, that magical slow motion shot of something dropping. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I, I, I like it. Um, let's give him like a messenger bag. On oh, one yeah, side, that's good. And then like an actual shopping bag on the other side. And uh, we'll put him in like, you know, like a tank top so we can see that he's, you know, kind of a muscular dude. Um, William 007 says, yes, that's correct. He is in a panic. You know, he's a panic in his face and it's, you know, he doesn't expect this happening. So, yeah, he's agreeing with us. We're all on the same page. I love it. That's great. Okay, so running, running. And uh, let's, let's put him in final position here. Away from this. Uh, see, and this is one of the things that, that we love about being able to do um, shared drawings in the background because I my my instinct is to put him right here. Yeah. The expressions are already great, like the oh no look. <laughs> Soul patch or no soul patch? Uh, soul patch. <laughs> soul patch. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Then, but if I go to the BG and like take this uh, line here, and I can move it. Whoops. Move it out of the way so it's not like sticking out of his head. Yeah, you know, like, like a tangent kind of thing, right? Is that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, we have a. a um, a thing that I created on on the show that I'm working on right now, a character called the Ten Gentleman, <laughs> who shows up and uh, highlights all your tangents. That is funny, man. <laughs> so, and and the, the the running joke is, don't try and have a conversation with him because it will go nowhere. <laughs> Just tangent after tangent after tangent. That's hilarious. So he's he's our he's he's one of my new favorite creations. You know, one thing I've always loved, and it might not really call it call for for in in our scene today, is that um, I like to call it the uh, well, it's one of those parallax shots where the in in live action, what you would do is you would zoom in as you're pulling out, so it gives you that. Um, Gosh, I can't think of the. I like can't believe dolly kind of effect. Yeah, you know, like that. Character drum. goes. Yeah, the character goes forward. The background Alpha goes. The Hitchcock like effect is what I call it. Yeah, <laughs> but um, obviously, yeah. um, we've already established certain things like the wide shot and looking down in extreme angles. It might not call for it unless something another event happens. So I just, but it just popped in my head to say it. It's one of my favorite shots to do. Probably yeah. hard to pull That's off fun. too. You know. Uh, it's it's not as hard to pull off as you think. Oh, wow. Okay, so so we got Sergio running in, and maybe maybe this is a little bit large. But we see him; he's he's clearly panicked. Uh, and I think one thing that we can do for him just to highlight some of this, we're gonna put the draw behind on. And I think one one thing that we need to do is put some shadow along his backside, showing that he's you know illuminated that's great uh, and if you really want to get fancy with it you could put like different shadows to see you know that the lights flickering and moving we don't have time for that but um <laughs> and then here we're, let's let's do the uh the shot that you were talking about um well, everything me, gets dropped right <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 um let's share that drawing for uh our background here and i think that that's i think what we're looking at is like an extreme low angle here 
and then like sidewalk and burning building. Um, like, you no, know, here's the the open the open door with like the stairs that go up. You know how some of those buildings have. Yeah. Then like you know, there's like another door over here that's got some sort of like, you know, let, let's make this a little bit bigger. Some sort of like boutique or whatever like that. That's like the first floor occupant. I think we have a we have a statement from I think I'd say it's Rudimus. I'm sorry if I'm jacking up your name. He basically is calling it the Hitchcock, or they're calling it the Hitchcock pull. What what we're when I said it's the Hitchcock shot. So that's oh, right. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, Hitchcock pull. That yeah. sounds good. See, we, I I've always called it a reverse dolly shot. <laughs> I mean, because that's how that's actually how you execute it. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean that that's the terminology I've always heard, but. Uh, uh, the, the Hitchcock one is great. So that's me one more time. What 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 do they call it? Uh, Hitchcock pull. The Hitchcock pull. Okay, right. I have to remember that terminology. Yeah, me too. Like, I, I mean, I always call it just the Hitchcock shot, but yeah. And I always explain that it's like you zoom in as you're moving back. So <laughs> that's how you get that parallax pull. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna put some like you know flames dropping and some other stuff. Oh yeah, embers and stuff. That's awesome. Embers and you know let's let's do this. Um, sometimes it's just good to put in a little bit of color, just to show you know what you're doing yeah. here. Um, I think that that really helps. All right, let's let's get. I was going to say that for your last shot, but you were moving so fast. I was like, all right, we're moving on. Let's keep going. <laughs> Sergio, we'll put him here. I'm just gonna rough rough this in. Um, so Sergio's here. Does that bump you too much for the cut? No, I don't think so at all. Okay. Cool. Um, because then this would be like where his bag would be. Yeah. And I, I, I can already as an editor, I'm already hearing like screams and car honks and horns and so know, maybe there's even uh, <laughs> yeah, okay. That that that's, again, the synergy between editor and board artist. That gives me yeah. a lot of ideas because then I can have some people like, you know coming out of the building yeah <laughs> you know running for it you that's know, awesome just just by saying those me. statements right there gave you some ideas that's that's incredible man <laughs> you know like a couple people running from some of the towers up on the building not to diminish uh sergio our our main here but um it yeah, gives it that, that extra right. sense of yeah. I hope some of the studios are watching this so that they can see that the you know the editor and the board artist go hand in hand together. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Show them those people. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh. Oh, there it goes. For some reason the the board wasn't responding to my commands. You're moving too fast for the the whole entire machine, Mike. That's what it is. I guess. <laughs> So let's take, let's take this, because I drew that on the wrong layer, let's put it on the right layer, and then we can do a draw behind and fill, and I'm going to just do like a little bit of outline in here like this, uh, that, give him some core shadow. Mm -hmm. Because he'd be backlit, right, from the fire lighting? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then um, let's give him his bag. Um, and, and that's full of various supplies. Um, I think we need to have that a little higher, though. 
I mean, that's it, generally this would be the height that it would be at, but I think yeah. it needs more room to fall. I agree. Well, couldn't you, uh, maybe you could bring Sergio closer to camera then, which would bring everything a little higher possibly? Yeah. Do you think that eats up too much of your frame? I mean, that looks pretty cinematic. No, no, I, I, think, I think it looks good. Yeah. I mean, um, we always have a little bit of a little bit of leeway with the camera too, where we can um, give it like just a drift adjust. Mm -hmm. So as we look at it, you know, we've got that little bit right. of movement yeah. there. So if we draw this out a little bit, and the the keyframes are going to stay put, but we can chop that up. And uh, on layer B, I don't know, layer C, we can just have this drop down and we'll just add the, the rest of oops, so what we want, the rest of this bag. And then let's do another split. Um, where we have that thing just sort of like, you know, not splat, but we need a, a splash drawing. And there it is back to knowing about animation, squash and stretch, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and, and that's one of the things that, you know, is very helpful when you're doing stuff like this is knowing like that there are going to be squash drawings, settles, yeah. uh, stuff like that that's going to happen and you're going to need to know about you know and you know I, I think with that an editor should know a little about animation as well because when i first started not knowing about animation coming from live action i would always cut out the squash poses and it's like wait it just looks like it pops what are you doing charles you know it's not knowing any better you know <laughs> so yeah so give it that little bit of like thunk And then if you really wanted to get sort of fancy with it, um, and this is something, you know, sometimes it's just the small things that you do that can add so much life to, to, to something. And for, in this instance, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, oh, I'm going to switch this drawing. First of all, fix the camera. And if I hold down alt, I can go through the frames without, you know, messing around with other edit points. Um, and I can just have uh, these falling. Mm -hmm. You know, Mike, while you're doing that, something interesting about that a lot of people ignore is the camera sometimes is a character as well, kind of showing you what's next. And, you know, back in the beginning, Simon 31's idea was he needs to figure out who burnt down the studio. You know, and, you know, you playing with the dropping of stuff, maybe the camera reveals like someone around the corner with the match or or some or maybe the guy running out of the building, even, you know, something yeah. to kind of forward the story along. I, I don't know. Like, I'm, just, I'm just spitballing, hoping some spaghetti sticks to the wall. <laughs> you know, what? I think what we can do, let's let's cut back to this shot. Oh, yeah. Let's cut back to that. I'm going to copy and paste that. It's going to put us in, put us in a new shot again. Remember, the BG is uh, linked here. So I, I think that, um, you know, Sergio watching this all all go up, his expression, I think, would have changed by then. And uh, he, he, he would have been like, you know, like, no, no, yeah. or, or something, you know, like, this, this can't be happening sort of thing. Um, and, you know, seeing what you just did with a whole new shot is, you know, coming from a guy that, you know, normally does not read the manual or anything. I learned later when I get experience that uh, I worked harder, not smarter. And you're basically taking stuff from a previous shot to kind of make another one, which is which is pretty awesome. <laughs> the unknowledgeable me would have redrew, redrew this, you know what I mean? <laughs> and, I, and I think that makes cinematic sense too, though. Like yeah. talking, going back to the cinematography, like um, it drives me crazy when people cut back to the same shot only with a different like camera angle. 
yeah, it pops to the editor, you know? If you yeah. cut it back to back or use things, it, it's, it never lines up. Yeah. So, like, I, I think it, it just makes, like, solid cinematic sense to... <laughs> I, I love the alliteration there. Um, <laughs> solid cinematic sense to just cut back to it and, and, and use that shot that you've yeah. already set up. Yeah, you know, and let's let's duplicate that, and let's have uh, let's have Sergio like look around for help, and I'm just gonna select all of this. I'm gonna turn that to um, like a um, like a, a a color that has a more alpha to it, and If I can ask a question, it might be not the smartest, but is this considered like a like an onion skin kind of effect? Um, it kind of would be, but we're not actually using the onion skin. This is kind of a fake onion skin ah. because uh, what I'm really doing here is um, sort of simulating an onion skin without needing to actually use the onion skin. Nice. So that would go like this. And his hair's kind of got. Uh, put his shoulder forward a little bit. And this is, again, where the animator in me comes in mm -hmm. uh, to, to take over because, uh, you know, knowing, knowing that anatomical structure of people really, really is helpful. Enable being able to turn your characters where you need them to, to look. Yeah, fun uh, fact to it. You came from that was like your that's your root, your background, right? Animation first. Yeah, right? animation is yeah. is my background. Yeah, that's that's, that's so, what so. I was. That's what I wanted to. Uh, that's what I wanted to be. Is an animator. Uh, and uh, oh, that. and then uh, right as I was, you know in in high school and stuff that's when like 2d animation started taking a dive <laughs> and, uh, i mean and the 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 skills still translate of course but uh there weren't jobs anymore for somebody who was just a 2d animator really uh, i think that's coming back though as more and more uh studios and various places especially in europe are bringing 2d back as a medium mm. And, uh, you know, like the cartoon saloons and, and some of oh, those yeah. <laughs> uh, people that are doing, you know, fantastic work overseas. And uh, honestly, they're kind of putting a lot of the U.S. companies to task uh, because their work is just so much. So amazing. It's just so gorgeous, you know. Yep, yep. And their storytelling uh, is, I feel like, so much more pure than, than what we have in this sort of corporate -y, environment um you know and, and corporations and and corporate media definitely mm -hmm. have a place in in animation that's not to say that they don't but i feel like sometimes that structure can give way to so much second guessing that it dilutes it into like mush whereas um <laughs> you know having trust in those creators uh i feel like can can bring about some really, you know, fantastic material. You know, seeing you do the shading a minute ago, you know, I wanted to ask, but I know that this is a difficult question because it's a case by case situation based off the board artists. And let me give an example. Like, you know, you know, when I was on Big Hero 6, there were certain character, there are certain board artists when, you know, you know you're gonna have like 1500 panels just for, you know, like one or two scenes, you know, one to two shots. And, um, <laughs> and yeah. so w with that, and then you then you have some that kind of manage time a little differently and you get like, you know, you, you know, half of that. But seeing the shading, I wondered, you know, when do you, is it based off like your show or the showrunners kind of like, or the directors kind of what they're asking for to know like the shading, like, you know, my thought was, well, will we have some flickering red and, you know, red and orange kind of going back and forth? Or how do you know, how do you gauge what's too much? Is it just your time that you gauge when it's, you know, okay, I need to take it easy and just kind of give the shade and that's it? 
or do I animate some of the embers and the lights coming in the shot? Does that make sense? Or maybe I was too worried. Yeah. You understand. No, no, no. That, that makes total sense. Um, and again, yeah, it's on a case by case basis. And honestly, a lot of the time it just comes down to time. Yeah, I bet it, it comes does. down to time and it comes down to whether or not that effect is really needed. Because yeah, to uh, tell the story, you're probably right, because we just saw the fire. We don't really need to see everything animated every shot, right? No, no. But uh, what I'm really getting at, though, is the fact that if you do it, you're going to be tied to it oh. for the next, like, so many shots. So, like, oh my gosh, if, yeah, you can, right. if, if you can figure out a way to, like, do it simply and effectively and without having to, you know, make sure that it's in every single shot. Like, That's right. Tracking it is so difficult. You're right. Yeah. Oh, man. All right. And I think this is where Sergio is going to see somebody. Now the plot thickens. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be funny if it was like his uncle Bob or something. Like that. First off, that's funny to have a name like Sergio, and then your uncle's name is Bob. <laughs> he catches his family member burning his studio down. I just went dark. <laughs> and then it turns out to be like an elaborate practical joke, and that's just <laughs> what these people do. <laughs> like, hopefully, we'll get some suggestions of who we who Sergio sees that burned down his studio. It's like, I broke your leg, you burned down my studio. <laughs> that would be hilarious. He's in crutches and he burnt down a two-story studio. <laughs> I set your car on fire. That's funny, man. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> it's just this elaborate series of, of crazy uh, pranks that go too far. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe instead of like the more open mouth, should be like a more closed mouth. Oh, it looks like we got something. Cool. Okay, so it looks like Helene, I think I'm saying your name right. Again, I'm apologizing in advance to everyone. <laughs> yeah. uh, so I'm a motion designer with experience in video too, but I have a graphic design degree specializing in motion graphics. Great. I also am a, um, they're, they're a competent illustrator and they want to switch from motion graphics to animation exclusively, but they don't know where to start in terms of work, of workflow. Do you have any advice? Mike, do you have any advice? Do you want me to read that again? Um, yes, I have advice. I mean, you're, you're in motion design. I mean, you're halfway there to be a character animator already. Totally. I mean, uh, the motion is definitely a big part of that. Um, I would definitely recommend that you guys check out Toon Boom Harmony uh, as a pipeline because not only is it very, uh, there's a lot of support for it um, and it's it's fairly simple to pick up. Um, there are tutorials all over the place that you can find um, from Toon Boom. There's the learning portal. There's... Um, there's a new service that, um, and, and Janelle, could you put something in uh, the chat for uh, the new learning portal that's coming out with uh, a lot of the a lot of the new material? But um, if that's the 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 way that your business is going, I I would say go with it and uh, adapt, learn, get some get some new skills. I mean, to switch from motion graphics to animation, that's pretty easy. I mean, you kind of got all the foundation already right so i say just get that portfolio you know start working on your portfolio mix it you'll be the you could be the first person to have motion graphics and animation all combined into one in your portfolio that'll make you stand out wouldn't you agree mike well she won't be the first but she'll be among uh, oh, among a select few. The handful yeah i mean uh, a, a buddy of mine went that way um he he owns a, a shop out in utah and mm -hmm. uh that's that's what that's what digital gravy started as oh wow so my, my my friend chaz like yeah he he started out as a as a motion graphics designer and now he they do character animation at his shop and uh you know well let me ask a question uh, and and maybe even throw that back at them uh would you agree mike 
it's a good start to know because the statement that was said is switch from motion graphics to animation exclusively. But wouldn't you agree that you kind of got to know exactly what you want to do? Like you had an animation background and, you know, so you knew what you wanted to do. Do you think starting and going in kind of knowing what you do? Cause you got props, you got, you know, revisionist, which is a probably a strong starting point, but you know, there's a lot of things that you could, you know, dive into. Would you say you kind of got to know what you want or just kind of go in blind? Um, you definitely should have a, a goal in mind for yeah. sure. Like you definitely need a goal in mind. All right. Um, uh, it's, uh, it, that's, your goal is going to determine the way you proceed forward. Right. That's right? Exactly what I was hoping you'd say. Okay. So let's see. We've got Sergio C something. He's at screen right. So we can keep him here as screen right. But I think he would be looking down the street. So, um, <laughs> so we could we could we could pull a fast one on 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 the audience and and start him on the right. Mm -hmm. So let's start him on the right and reveal. How does that work for you? Sounds good to me. Let's see. So uh, we can do our background here, and we're going to share that drawing again. So share that drawing. And let's do like, you know, some sort of thing like this where we see an alleyway break between the street there and uh, I think we can do this and have um, you know, some old style building stuff here. And there's another trick. You know, you don't have to draw all these bricks. You just copy them. Yeah, that's Shift up. Oh my goodness. <laughs> like, you know, if, if you if you have some some sort of thing that you're looking for, you know, you can you can copy it, shift it around, so copy and paste that. I'm gonna put these bricks up here. And then uh, you know, I'm gonna Actually, one of the things I'm going to do is darken up these lines a little bit so I can get some tone in there, too. And uh, drop in some tone into here so we can see that this place is not well lit. Right? Um, oops. One thing I, did, I didn't do is put on the draw behind. And so to fix that, I'm going to select by color and just cut and paste to put it right back on the top. Wow. All right, so Sergio, we have our, our hero Sergio, um, and he is going to be looking in this direction. There's Ag still on. <laughs> is and, this uh, considered the reversal then, right? Yeah, this, okay. this would be a reverse. Okay. So we, we cut from him here to him here. Perfect. Um, and uh, we're we're not going to put too much into this particular drawing because we got we got to get a move on. Yeah. Uh, and while you're working, I wanted to give just a little more touch on the, you know, advice question. Um, you know, we said, you know, maybe a portfolio and, you know, basically, like Mike said, whatever you kind of are going to focus on will def definitely dictate what you put in your portfolio. But I mean, right now we're in a great time where you got, you know, you already have the experience of motion graphics and all that. You can just start building your portfolio and get it out to people, you know, and, you know, hit people up in LinkedIn and stuff like that, or, or, you know, or just start submitting it to job posts and stuff. That's really great. So you it sounds like you uh you're ahead of the game so good luck <laughs> let's put somebody in here hat on oh the mysterious person in the shadows yeah let's give him like a like a bag or like a duffel bag yeah. Duff, duffel bags are, are are never suspicious right <laughs> around a bag full of stuff. 
I'll never look at duffel bags the same again. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> well, you're welcome. You know, I, 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 try, I try to make everything just so suspicious. <laughs> You know, and maybe give him a little bit of a snicker like he's a, uh, join this. Okay, and so we can go, we can do the reveal this way. Can even zoom in a little bit of that what do you think charles you think uh yeah my question to you though is can you zoom go in the, i was going to ask you about that go to the shot before to kind of just see if we're cross if there's like a line being crossed but no it looks like the eye line and everything is is good yeah that looks accurate to me yeah especially since there's movement yeah it won't feel so too much of a jump well i think we can start a little bit wider here maybe that would sort of help it He's in relatively the same position, I think. Mm -hmm. so. And the and the reveal with a good boom sound effect, have some music ringing out. <laughs> yeah, dun dun dun. Yeah. <laughs> and that's when Sergio would then we we can cut back to Sergio and be like, "Hey, you know you." Is that you, Bob? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Dang it, Bob. <laughs> They're like, ah, good one, Bob. Yeah, because we get the sense that, that they pranks. This prank is just going on a whole other level, man. <laughs> well, it's like a, um, it's it's like that Weird Al song about uh, I'll never forget about Larry, no matter how hard I try. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he's like in the in the process of like murdering him and leaving him in a. In a in the forest or something like that. And he's like, Larry would have loved this gag, you know. That's funny, man. As he's like stuffing him in a plastic bag <laughs> after a life's worth of torture. And that's just uh one of the things I really love about vector drawing is I can just like take a couple of elements and just kind take of them out. stretch it out. Wow. And we'll just uh and i like how you can you were tracking still the lighting with the shadows and highlights on the side you know that's pretty great that's something that's something easily to forget when i'm cut when i'm in the edit and i'm like oh man why is something popping from shot to shot and you don't realize till later sometimes it's just shading just forgot to get put on right here's another animation trick sometimes if you if you lean a character into something mm -hmm. Like this, yeah. It can it can really help a lot. Just give it that arc of motion. Oh right, yeah. And then in this case, we'll we'll need a camera adjust as well, just to give that a little bit of oomph. Hey, <laughs> and then. Uh, Get rid of these extra keyframes that we don't need anymore. Sometimes, well, when you when you copy a a, a panel that has keyframes attached to it, those keyframes translate over to the next panel. Sometimes, if you don't need them, just get rid of them. Uh, All right, and then now, um, I'm thinking that we should have him start just start booking it after this dude. Like he doesn't know who he is, but the dude's like laughing or something as this building burns. So, so you thinking husband. maybe like some sort of a chase scene? Is that what you're trying to get to? Maybe. Oh, what man. do you think? Let, let, let's see what our audience thinks. You That's think Sergio should chase this guy? Pretty ambitious. <laughs> let's see what the if the audience has anything to say. How we're gonna? Oh, looks like something's coming through. While we wait for that. Mike, have you ever had any like, uh, I guess what I want to say is, 
has there any been has there been anything that ever surprised you when you first started doing storyboards? Oh, never mind. We got a question from William 7 saying the chase scene. Oh, he just said the chase scene would be cool. So I guess we are up for the chase scene, Mike. We are up All for right. the chase scene with uh, and we have to worry about time. So let's see if we can pull this off. If anybody can do it, Mike Morris can do it. We're doing it. We're doing it. So we're chasing him. After my But uh, what I was asking before was, had you ever had any, like, uh, I wouldn't say awkward moments, but was there anything that surprised you about storyboarding? Like, I gave that example of how it's surprising that the board artist and the editor don't always work together. And it's clear right now that right. the two, two together is very important, you know? Right. Well, one of the things that, I mean, one of the things that kind of, like, threw me a little bit was that, uh, you know, coming in as a new as a new board artist and a, and a new person, you know, working in animation or, or whatnot, mm -hmm. um, I had to learn how to draw things that I never really drew before. Uh, you know, like I was never a person who drew a lot of cars. And if you're gonna have, if you're gonna do like a car chase scene, you gotta be able to draw cars. That's true. So I think we need to move him forward, like he's just taken off after this guy. Come back here. Yeah. And he's a dancer, so he's fleet of foot. <laughs> so we'll just we'll just give him a, a little. Yeah, it's it's too bad. This is such a a serious event. Maybe every time he talks, he does. <laughs> you, I gotta get you. You know, into a dance yeah. move kind of a thing. You know, that would be hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Dance battle. He's like, you burned down my studio. Yeah, that's funny. Now we're gonna that's dance him. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, I wish we had time for that. Uh, okay, okay. I think I think we need to make that happen. That All right, we're 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 going man. we're going hardcore right now. <laughs> and uh, I think we need to let's okay. Here we go. Now now I'm now I'm inspired. I'm I'm on fire. Um, let's get this background. Actually, you know what? We're just we're just gonna straight up copy. And we're going to paste this here. Um, and then I'm going to take out this first keyframe. So we just have the one keyframe from our second panel position. <laughs> so now we have we have this, you, and he runs. And then we need to change Sergio uh, running. So he's now, and, and we're just going to do this like, Super dirty right now because when I they wanna... come out and they face off and start dance battling, that would be hilarious, man. Then, like, the dance police show up and <laughs> oh, they're like, <laughs> when, when they arrested, they say, You got served, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> instead of like, uh, you're under arrest. All right, um, now we're going to, um now we're gonna separate the ideas by, you know, giving this guy like a. Huh? <laughs> Sometimes you can just flip the vectors, and it and it will will do it for you. So we did get another question um, from Hel Heleny. Her the question was, how difficult was it to learn to use the tablet, and do you have any tips? They found that it's to be um, a little daunting at first. Uh, over it, it takes a little bit of getting used to, but I'm telling you, like once you get used to it, it's it's the way to go. You know, it's like funny. I've you use the Cintiq. I actually edit with the with a tablet, and I love that right. there's shortcuts. I love all the because there's macros on the side. I can do certain things and add certain keys to the buttons and things that would take five keys started i really want to hear what you have to say but I, oh, no, that's fine. I, I, i'm an advocate for that for the tablet <laughs> all right and then we are gonna just keep moving sergio forward toward this guy actually you know what i think we need to start him a little bit bigger over here we need to start him just a little bit bigger and then we can move him forward as this guy gets freaked out and runs off sometimes you can switch the arms that looks a little funky 
So we won't do that. <laughs> um, and we'll just have arms coming back and, and running forward. This is a, a, a trickier shot to do. Um, Have you always used the tablet mic over the mouse? Obviously. Uh, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, for years now. I mean, I, I've 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 done a lot of work with with Wacom on different projects. Yeah, that's right. And uh, you know, they're they're top of the line, man. Like, yeah. you know, and and they've got a lot of different models that you can choose from that will be good for your budget. You know, if you're just starting out, uh, it's Harmony, right? So if you're just starting out and you want to like get into something, I, I personally would recommend just going with the Cintiq Pro 16. Oh yeah. It's uh, it's smaller. Um, and then, then there's like the Wacom one. If you're like really budget conscious, it's that 13 inch tablet mm -hmm. just to get used to it. Like yeah, I know. have, yeah, go ahead. Like I have the the big thirty two inch, um, and that for me like works perfectly. Um, but you know that can be cost prohibitive for some people. Like they have right now, um, the the newest tablet that they have is the um, Cintiq Pro twenty seven right. um, that they came out with not long ago, and mm -hmm. uh, that's a fantastic tablet as well. So. Um, it gets a little bit on, on the expensive side, right. yeah. But um, you know, but I feel like uh, you know you using the Cintiq over what I use is just a tablet with no screen. Using the mouse could be a slow transition, you know. So I'm hoping, hopefully, we ans answer your question to help you a little bit because you can just use the mouse until you get used to using that Cintiq. Also, you know, that's. I think it's, but it's essential, I would say, right, Mike? I would say it's a solid business investment. Yeah. I mean, it's a solid investment in in what you're trying to do. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just like getting a subscription to the software you're going to use. That's right. Like, Boom. It's, it's, it's the cost of doing business, right? I mean, that's that's the tools. It's going to pay for itself. My 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 dad is was in construction like my whole life, right? <laughs> and his tools were his thing. You know, yeah. like you got to have the tools for the job and for storyboarding tablets and, and storyboard pro, those are the tools to do the job. Absolutely. You know, and, <laughs> and I've, I've tried to do stuff with other, like I tried to do an animatic once with uh, just a bitmap software in premiere. It took me like four times longer than it would have, if I had just done it in storyboard pro, like I, yeah. I thought I would originally do. Okay. So let's add some other stuff here. Let's add like a dumpster, some trash cans. Let's put some other stuff here in the foreground. Maybe like one of those like uh, fire escape ladders or something like that. Oh, that's awesome. That's telling us the, where we are. We might be in New York or something like that or Chicago or something. <laughs> right. And then we need to put, let's get another lighter color here. And one thing we can do is we're going to take this. And this is technically what's called an overlay underlay. So we're gonna put that on layer C because in the ba the background is going to be like whatever is on the other side of the street, right? Yeah. That's gonna be some other building or something like that. So they have like maybe some like this or. And then if I hold down control, it's command on a Mac, I can just copy these straight up. Awesome. And have like, you know, a door right here. Whatever. And then I can have my characters come in. Um, and then Shady Dude. The hat is right here. And he's running away with his giant duffel bag. This foot would be forward. People don't run with their one arm and leg <laughs> at the same time. It's always 
opposites. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And then we need um, another panel. And then we're going to put him forward. Like that. Then we need our, our hero, Sergio. He's hot on his tail, huh? Right around the corner. All right, we're gonna move layer A and B now above C. Well, actually, layer A, yeah, yeah. I'm just going to do one little thing, though. I'm going to take this ground plane here and move it down, back down to the background layer because, really, the only thing that they're going to be colliding with, and this goes back down to, to knowing your animation process, Yeah. Uh, the only thing that really should be here on that layer is these walls, right? Because they're the only thing that are going to be a covering element. Or an obscuring element. So I'm going to turn that light back off. So this guy is going to run through, and I'm going to put him on top. Name, um, it's the names. Say that again, Mike. They're they're the layers of the same names. Oh, gotcha. Um, they're just in different positions. And then uh, we're just going to do this really fast and, and do this in the, in the, in the thumbnail. Hmm. Uh, I think he should be shouting, you come back here. As he's running forward. Yeah. Um, and then I think another another thing that we can do for um, Sergio here is we can show his face and show his determination <laughs> as he like books it forward, you know? Yeah. Is there going to be a dance off, Mike, or is our, uh, our or will our enemy get away? I don't think he's going to get away, for sure. <laughs> he's not getting away. Uh, hold on, I have a really important call from my wife. I think. Uh oh. Well, maybe I'll talk. A little while you're on the phone call, you can mute and I can maybe. Sorry, talk. folks. I could talk a little bit about the um, the illustration question we had earlier. You know, if you can just mute Mike, let me know if you can finish your call. It's okay. I'm doing it by text. So, oh, okay, cool. And I'm going to text and draw at the same time. All right. That's whew, multitasking. All right. Boom. We'll keep going on. But I do think um, if I can touch back on Helene, like I said, you really should get that portfolio. That's top notch, the most important thing, which I think you already know coming from your industry of motion graphics. So I keep harping on it because that's so important. <laughs> All right, I think what, what, we're, what we've got here right now is I think we're just going to have a you know, uh, some sort of ladder or something coming on down here that homeboy's going to try and crawl up. <laughs> but Sergio's going to grab him, pull him back down. And then the dance battle. You know what? That's, that's, that's too much. That's too much. This is going to be a dead end. Oh, it's that's great. Dead yeah, dead end. That's right. It's going to be a dead end. And we're going to have... Until death. <laughs> the the guy with the duffel bag, like, you know, trying to get away, like trying to figure out if he can like 
climb up or, or something like that. And um, and then uh, Sergio is going to step in. Then the music starts. <laughs> That's hilarious. And then uh, the guy's gonna turn around. And then I think what we need to do is go to a close up of Sergio. <laughs> And seeing this close up, this is where the editor in, in me thinks like black bars comes in from the top and bottom for the duel. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And he says, You torched my studio, didn't you? <laughs> now I have to take you down and dance. <laughs> Retribution comes swiftly. He's going to take like maybe a step forward. And then, uh, okay, what do you think about this? What do we do a flash zoom out? And he, like, strikes a pose. It, like, starts the dance paddle. Yeah, okay. We're getting close on time, so we got to get that. We got to get those poses in that dance battle in there, though. <laughs> yes, this is will. when, this is, this leads to the questions we had earlier about, it's all about time. <laughs> yes, and, and time management is a huge thing. Yeah. So, uh, and, and then, um, so now what we're going to do is I'm just going to do a quick, I'm going to drop a, uh, a quick one point perspective. I'm going to put it right on uh, the middle of Sergio's face and I'm going to get a bigger brush out and I'm going to do these lines here. I'm going to flash zoom. <laughs> um, and again, we're just making this quick. Turn off my guides. Draw behind so we don't mess around with the other things. And then we can cut really fast. A new shot. Um, and then the, the trick is this, is that you do what's called a match cut. So we, whoosh, and then this one starts and ends fairly quickly right. with that same sort of setup. Um, like this. So you mean like it's going to whip zoom back into the the other guy? Yeah. Well, what we, what we need is we need to preserve this to put into the next one. So, you know, when we cut. Yeah. Then, then we have the, the scene we're looking for. So let's cut that. We'll put it on the very top because that's effects. And then... Um, we're going to just do a quick background. Ooh, that's, that's way in the back. We've got um, Sergio blocking the path. And we're going to salt shaker this. We're going to put Homeboy in the front here, who's the antagonist. Then we're going to take all of that. Copy it into the next panel. So there they are.
we can just end it on we can just end it on them saying let's uh, you know let's dance you know that could be how we end it since we are pressed for time the yeah. audience know that's the next scene <laughs> And then uh, we're going to do just this really quick thing. This is kind of always how it ends up as me. Rush, 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 right at the end. <laughs> I think he's going to. Oh, he starts dancing already, right? <laughs> Yeah. Oh, you know what he should do? <laughs> That's so funny. I, okay, okay. What we need to do, I'm going to take this, copy, and paste that, um, and then delete these, uh, delete these extra keyframes. He's going he's gonna to take a boombox out of the bag that he had. <laughs> You know, that's pretty funny, especially if the bag's not real big and, and animation specialty, you pull out this giant thing out of a bag. That is hilarious, man. <laughs> and then... Um, then we see, we cut in close on the on the old school boombox being put down on the ground. Wow. It's even got a tape deck in it. <laughs> For those that don't know what a tape deck is. <laughs> yeah, serious. <laughs> and then he's going to push the button. But then they start dancing, yeah. Boom box down. And then the dance, then the dance goes on. Boom. Yeah. All right. There we go. <laughs> You're about to get served. <laughs> okay. What do you what do you think? Uh what do you think? Is uh we can we uh play the whole animatic? Are we ready yet? Yeah, let, let's go back. Let's 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 run through it. Okay, we got right. Sergio Dance Studio. It's on fire. Oh no, ah, everybody. Here comes Sergio. Okay, you, you do the sound effects and I'll. Right. I'll so, Sergio <laughs> Dance Center is on fire. Ah, fire. Cars. Rah, rah. Sergio, what? Huh? <laughs> People screaming out of the building. Backdrop. Oh no, what? Huh? Hey. We come over. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> hey, you! I'm gonna get you! <laughs> he runs. Oh, he's out of there. Music. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, he turns. I'll let you finish this, Mike. Go ahead and finish this. <laughs> Got nowhere to go. Let's end this. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what kind of music uh, that that Hip -hop artist definitely is not too. not in my That's awesome though, man. vocal wheelhouse. <laughs> You're about to get served, <laughs> Raymondo. <That's funny>. Well, <laughs> Mike, knows exactly who it is. Thank you so much for joining us once again for Collaboratory. Do you have any projects though, or anything you'd like to kind of draw our attention to? You know what? I just want to give a shout out to my younger brother, Bo. It's his birthday today. Oh, happy and, birthday. Uh, he is he is just younger than me, so we spent a lot of time together growing up. So happy birthday, bro. Hopefully, Mike will record him doing a dance for you, his hip hop skills, you know, in the future. Um, <laughs> That's a good birthday gift, Mike. I'm just saying. If I, um, if I if I go uh, undergo some radical surgery and I'm all doped up, then then yeah. We'll see. <laughs> well, thank you, everyone, for joining us for the col for Collaboratory. If Mike Morris could draw some elaborate Michael Bay-style hip-hop dance battle with a f Inferno in one hour or so, think about what you can draw in three weeks.
You can download a 21-day trial of Storyboard Pro from the website at toonboom.com and find free video tutorials at learn.toonboom.com. And if and if you are looking for any interviews, be sure to visit be sure to visit, I'm sorry, I stumbled there, at blog.toonboom.com for any articles of storyboarding, animation, and 2D games. I know I learned a lot today about Storyboard Pro with Mike, and I hope you did too. And we'll see you guys next time. See you later. <laughs>